Make sure we're good. All right, what's up, everybody? Half Dead Musings podcast number nine. Man, we're almost to the double digits. Man, that's a strange yeah. feeling. Yeah, we're keeping. <laughs> it's nice to be steady, and yeah. uh, then we're pump them out, and before yeah. you know it, who knows? We'll be coming up on a hundred. Yeah, it's fun we too. Calculate it's, how old we should be by then. <laughs> well, if we do it every other week, uh, two weeks, so then two a month. So to good. get to twenty would take us ten months. <laughs> so we do about twenty one a year. <laughs> so that would take us about five years. Interesting. Well, yeah. So five it, years, we'll hit a hundred. It doesn't feel like work, besides a little editing, and uh, but what's cool is we get hours of content for just chilling and then having interesting conversations. So, oh yeah. So tonight, uh, I've been going back and listening to the hardcore history, like normal, of uh, the fall of uh, the Roman Republic, and I've been seeing so many parallels to nowadays, as well as just seeing how messed up and divided our country is, and where everybody's loyalties are, and. Marco has also been studying more of the macro Your politics trend. stuff. Yeah, yeah. it uh, continues to be really interesting. And uh, there's a book I got to read that came out recently uh, by Peter Zihan. But uh, like I said, I'm uh, I got I'm in the middle of this culture series book first. I want to told you that Elon Musk likes uh, mm -hmm. by Ian M. Banks, the culture Sounds series. Uh, that's the newest one. I forget what it's called, but. Uh, it's a really sweet, like super realistic sci-fi book. Like just recently in the book, uh, uh, this woman's on like this advanced ship and the ships all have minds. They're like super advanced <laughs> AI. And it's like, uh, this ship's kind of a dick and uh, <laughs> more so than other ones, but it's like also like, uh, <laughs> the they ship. all have cool names. It's called uh, Outside the Normal, like, bounds of morality something like that is mm -hmm. the name of the ship they all have cool names is it's that, like a murderer class or something is that they all have classes Grimes? and this one is like some psychotic one uh, she mentioned it in her newest uh yeah. interview yeah the one mm -hmm. with, with lex right that grimes yeah yeah that's where i remember yeah. hearing about that as well so yeah, yeah she got me i was like i was wondering which one of those uh books to read next and after she mentioned that and that it was the newest one and she got hooked on it i was like <laughs> yeah i'm gonna just go to that one might as well that's pretty great yeah all right well here let's jump on into this i got something that i heard of uh recently that blew my mind a bit was that there, i don't know how many people were polled but they polled uh democrats republicans and independents and they said what is the probability that you'll see a civil war in your lifetime and uh, fifty-two percent of Republicans say they think that they'll see a civil war. Fifty percent of independents and forty-six percent of Democrats. That's how divided our country's gotten. And there's like these clear dividing lines these days. And it reminds me of going back to ancient Rome. They had to do these army reforms at one point because these these probably Germanic invading armies came out of nowhere from the north and these armies the fighting forces were so big it took them six days of non-stop walking just to go past this one roman fortress at one point so it, it was well we're not gonna have to worry about that no mm -hmm. one's invading mainland america anytime soon well <laughs> well the thing mm -hmm. geography is too good for that is uh they had to do these reforms because before the only way you could serve in the military was to be a landowner and because they needed troops so badly, they had to do these reforms. It's kind of <laughs> Caius Marius. Guy. Nowadays, that would not. We would have almost no one because everyone rents. Yeah, everybody's shot right now. <laughs> there everybody's would be no poor. army. No, our army would be <laughs> pathetically small. <laughs> See, but what that did in ancient Rome, it kept them loyal to the state. And then when when these reforms, what they did was it gave them the manpower needed to repel this crazy invasion yeah. these germans were like yeah. way bigger uh they're most likely germans there's still some debate historically so i'll just keep yep. it simple they're called the kimbri and the two tones i think two tones or two tones and mm -hmm. uh so the, this invasion was crazy and they were steamrolling army after army and uh so these reforms allowed rome to exist because they were able to eventually fight this army off through this brilliant uh, general named caius marius and, they had uh, more numbers because of these reforms. Yeah, uh, I don't know. They the, they were able to draft non landowners. Oh yeah, they, they, that's and, kind of the uh, point, right? They yep. needed more numbers. Yeah, they were able to get more and everything. But what that did is it made it 
so every army was then loyal to its uh, general, basically the commander, and because Maximus Decimus Meridius, especially <laughs> commander of the Felix Legions of the North, husband to a murdered wife, oh gladiator, father to a murdered son, and he will have his vengeance in this <laughs> life or the next. Well, <laughs> the reason why they were loyal... are you not entertained? <laughs> <laughs> The, they were loyal to their commanders, their generals, because they were the yeah, ones like the movie. who were going to promise them, like, say when they would uh, invade other countries, they would loot the crap out of the place, and then the generals get, would get the majority of stuff. You and, and then, you get to rape all you want. Yeah, you would, did shitty, so no raping for you. Uh, no, and but, we're keeping all the loot. So they would spread the wealth. And so you it, that's it all ramped up from that point forward. It, like Julius Caesar was the man who broke the Republic, basically. And it was a massive civil war at the end there between Pompey and Caesar. And it all started because of You're these reforms. the central government kind of lost central control. Yeah. And, and then there was more, uh, more political. The commanders wanted political power. Yeah, exactly. And and so and there was always conflicting interests. And so when you had like say at one point they uh, recalled this one general named uh Sulla. And this guy was like super hardcore. They as soon as he left to go invade uh, Mithridates was the poison king I mentioned before, the guy who was obsessed with poison uh in mo in modern day Turkey, uh, his country back then. Uh then they recalled Sulla from Rome, they did a vote where they said, "No, nope, it's not yours anymore. Get back." <laughs> so then, it, it all hell was just breaking loose, and all these conflicting, mm. and that's what I see today as far as Democrats and Republicans go, or even left versus right in all these countries in the world. You got conflicting interests, and people are loyal to their party more so than to the state itself these days. It's like, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, this, uh, I just, I kind of. Loyal. I disagree. That's loyalty to the party is not so much a thing. It's just loyalty to yourself and your own interests. Uh, for a lot of politicians, there's just a lot of captured kind of intermingling between the party and and special interests. Uh, hmm. But at the same time, yeah, okay. So a lot of people think that uh, there there could be a civil war because tensions are high right now because there's this, we're in a, pu a period of political change. There's a lot of change yep. going on. There's a lot of global change. There's demographic change. There's political change going. The left has gone farther uh, the left than ever as well. Yeah. The, the left is like, the right has just been going insane, you know, uh, off the scale. So now someone who used to be a centrist is like... Uh, it's like the whole thing has shifted to the right. Like what? the left is like, left uh, is you know, I just left. want, I just want some like basic protections, and uh, I don't know. But that, you remember it just that seems chart that, that way to me. That Elon shared. It showed Elon's in the same position, and then like over the past twenty years or whatever, the left went further left, and then uh, they were still somewhat friendly, and then now the left went so far left, they're calling him a bigot for being what used to be a moderate leftist like 20 years ago, and even Tim Pool has been talking about it, and like all the charts and all the Tim Pool's like a political hack type of guy where no, he tries awesome. to, he, I don't, I don't think he's he, good. He, he kind of talks up the, 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 the fight between the left and the right because that gets clicks and that gets uh, attention. Yeah, he does. I don't really care about the fight between the left and the right at all. But I uh, just the thing is that like there's big change right now because the, there's uh, the systems changing. So like the groups that were typically in each party and the Democrats and Republicans is getting shaken up and they're uh, like the business community used to be more Republican. And they got ejected by Trump. Uh, they don't like the uh, instability and um, some of his rhetoric. So yeah. <laughs> they've been, they're like orphaned. So who knows if they're going to uh, end up on the Democrats now or if mm. they're going to do something else. At the same time, you have the Republican side is making like Trump, the Trumpists are making a play for um, labor. So, uh, so far, they haven't 
been promising anything that helps labor. So I find that interesting, but that's hmm. the way they're going. Right now, their base is they're trying to make uneducated voters and low, low educated labor and religious uh, extremists, uh, uh, you know, far, um, uh, uh, you know, just very religious people. That's becoming the base of the Republican Party right now. Mm -hmm. um, they used to have defense and um, and business community, but those are kind of where it got kicked out. Um, but there, I guess the numbers are in that section are kind of working. Hmm. Well, you know, do you I don't got. I don't care about that as much. Like, I think, uh, it, yeah, I mean, I do, but it's just, it's an annoying thing because, like, they're, everyone's going to be screaming and it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's loud, it's annoying. Everyone wants to have their, they want to become the litmus, litmus test for their side. So you got, like, the, the fringes of each party are going to try to take over and become the one who sets the agenda for the party. Yeah. But I do think we have a chance for a third party could work i know you're mentioning yeah. libertarians i don't know or green Macy's. party or Dave maybe Smith. some there's it's like things are so up in the air maybe they could get enough money if certain like uh interest groups wanted to go behind a third party hmm. uh, but it wouldn't really hold it would be like a temporary thing unless voting laws get changed you know if we had uh ranked choice voting for example instead of first past the post which is what we got now which limits us to two parties hmm. then you can um choose uh multiple candidates every time you vote and just rank them in order Ooh. so there's no spoiler candidate I so like you could that. choose a third party candidate and uh as long and if they don't get enough votes to win your vote automatically gets sent to the next year to your second choice so that way let's say you were like uh someone who liked bernie sanders and um uh you could but you uh you wanted to vote for or in the in the primary say you were like bernie sanders first you like andrew yang second mm -hmm. and then like everyone else was kind of like a toss-up you could have put that in for your primary states and uh, then Bernie would have had a much better chance, for example, because a bunch of people liked him, but they thought that maybe he couldn't win in the general. But if they got reassured because everyone else chose the same way and they felt safe to do so because they didn't think their vote would be wasted and uh, hmm. because they're so worried about losing to Trump then people would be more willing to vote what they actually think because they have the safety of knowing their vote isn't wasted yeah. where it's like, you know, the second best will still happen. So I think that would be positive for both sides. But yeah, uh, I like it. that would diminish the, the power of the, both parties right now. So I doubt, you know, that would be difficult to, uh, you know, who would oh, want to legislate that when they're, they're screwing themselves over. Yeah. I, oh, I, I just, uh, me and my brother were driving back from our uh, vacation and we were listening to that Dave Smith uh, podcast, and he was talking about the January 6th hearings. And I guess they oh, actually, yeah. during those hearings, they asked them, was there federal government involvement? And they were naming people by names, and they had the images of these people because they were showing that uh, the a lot of the Trump supporters who were there, they all started singling these guys out, saying, hey, Fed, Fed, Fed. And there's a video over a uh, tape, uh, or at least audio, of them saying, uh, don't listen to this Fed. And then the government was... What do you mean? Like people... Like in, instigating uh, it, helping like, to instigate it. And uh, like, and they were saying, get, don't listen to this guy. Because uh, there's been agent provocateurs, they call them, in the past. where they That way uh, they could they have one guy stirring up violence. That way they have uh, an excuse for the police to use like strong-armed tactics on the protesters and stuff like that in the past. So a lot of people are on the lookout for them. And then so they were asking uh, what or maybe they're just like leaders uh, like who wanted to just take a leadership role and try to move things forward. Well, yeah, this is where I was getting at is they were asking the uh, high ranking uh, government guy. I don't recall what his rank was, but they were asking, was there federal agents on scene there uh, instigating? And then they said Go ahead, they, dodge, they dodged the question over and over again. And uh, so, yeah, it's. They say uh, whenever it's convenient, they answer the question. 
whenever it's inconvenient, they say, oh, no, we can't comment on an open, in, uh, 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 open investigation, even though the whole point of the January 6th uh, meeting here is an in open investigation so the public can see what's going on and have some transparency. And so they say, nope, we can't comment because there's an investigation. Well, you're at the investigation. We're here to hear your you know, information, but yet... There's some real crazy secrecy there because the government would love to say, no, no, no. There was n absolutely no federal provocateurs there. Like, And this is what Dave Smith was pointing out, the libertarian uh, candidate soon to be. And, yeah, it was very fascinating. They had a lot of good info. I have no idea about any of that, but I know that the uh, hearings are going on. And um, I haven't seen any of them. Um probably would be a good idea to watch a little bit. I saw little snippets, and it seems like... They've got some good information going on. Um, probably more people should be watching it. Um, it but unfortunately, I think a lot of people aren't. Also, I think a lot of people, anyone who watches Fox News, um, they don't even, they're not even showing it on purpose. So you have entire huge percentage of Americans who should be trying to, you know, see the facts unfold and see like a, a view into what happened and a really important event. And then Fox News chose not to show it they were at all. I thought Tucker Carlson was having it on and they're talking over it a lot. They were showing it and then commenting I'm, I'm over sure it. different things happen different days. So yeah. I know at least one day they didn't show it. Another day was a tribute to like Trump, you know, some <laughs> kind of. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, they did some, well, like, see, you know, troll thing, the, like, montage, or the, their, you know... Republicans wanted it to be fair. They tried bringing Jim Jordan out there and stuff, but the only people that were allowed to be on this committee were people who voted to impeach Trump, like, even on the Republican <laughs> side. So they only chose the Democrat-friendly Republicans. They're refusing to let... Uh, the Trump uh, MAGA witnesses, as they're calling them, uh, record the testimonies and release it on their own free will. So all you're seeing is like small snippets of selected uh, committee uh, segments of what they want you to see. And Trump wrote a big public letter saying this is not the American way. Normally, you're supposed to at least have a, a cross-examination and for people to be able to, to defend themselves. And that's not what you're seeing right now. And so... Yeah, it seems like it's kind of stacked in one way. Interesting. I haven't seen it, so I don't know. I can't comment on it. Yeah. If I did, I might have a different opinion than you on how it's being presented, but I don't want to yeah. say anything because I haven't watched it. So. Yeah, I saw parts, but uh, and it, it, it seems horrible against Trump. And it seems like that's a, a big ploy just to make it so hopefully he'll not be popular to win the next election because most likely he's, he's going to run again. So that's what a lot of people way. are saying. So, yeah, I think it would be very unfortunate if he were to win again because we're coming up in a very sensitive time in the global scale and macro scale, where a lot of hard decisions are going to have to be made. And last person I'd be want as a president is tr like a narcissistic, <laughs> you know, spray tan, the hairdo moron. Uh, called Trump <laughs> trying to to steer things. You know, we need someone competent at this point. Well, I mean, the country was at its strongest in my lifetime and with record-breaking economy and stock market and a calm down North Korea, Russia was calm. Every, it seems like international uh, relations were... False, all false right. connections, you know. Uh, you, you can always uh, look at different data and... You know, attribute them to a president. Just the right things usually don't get attributed to the president, and the, all the wrong things do. So you got to look at actually the policies he did, and you know what he actually had an effect on. Not just look at things like, hey, the stock market was good, or you know, this other thing was good. You have to look at what he actually did. Well, you know, he did do a couple of positive things, from what I've heard. Like um, he did NAFTA two, which is actually. Um, is a is a good trade deal because um uh mexico and canada are very important partners for us of course this mexican rhetoric was very negative which is like idiotic and it's uh it's like shooting america in the foot trying to blame things on mexicans and people from central america because mexico is like the best trading partner it's like they're like mexican workers are now going to become a precious resource hmm. for like the next 50 years and uh 
a lot of them is already spoken for, uh, but uh, for companies that are going to need to try to make it in the next, uh, uh, you know, 40 years as we move more of the supply chain locally to Mexico and to the United States, and we have a shortage of workers because all the baby boomers, yeah. baby boomers are retiring, mm-hmm. and we have a much smaller cohort of uh, Zoomers coming in that are, for the most part, highly antisocial, <laughs> and uh, but can be very loyal if uh, if they never have to meet you. Uh, <laughs> so uh, they could do a good job, but they don't necessarily want to interact oh, uh, too much with their bosses. Have you followed any of the drug cartel stuff in Mexico recently? That's been super mind-blowing to me over the years. I've been watching a little bit. documentaries. Yeah, apparently and... there's this new thing called the Halesco New Generation, where that used to be the Sinaloa cartel was like uh, yeah. run more like a business, and that was El Chapo was part of that. Yeah. But now this new thing called the Halesco thing is is moving in. Yeah, it's from a different and region. They are, yeah, who's, uh, who's they're right? spreading. They're spreading their uh, there's uh, regions are kind of up in the air. They're trying to take over a border area mm-hmm. right now. Um, but uh, they're more military. They're run by like ex-military people, <laughs> and they're more uh, prone to use violence Hardcore. and also against like even civilians. Like the Sinaloa cartel, they re- realized it was bad business just to shoot like innocent civilians or tourists or something like that. It only brought more heat on them, didn't help uh, achieve their ends. The Halesco new generation is wants to use, thinks it's a good way to prove their power and intimidate. And um, there, uh, mm-hmm. there well, seems like a worse replacement coming up. Uh, well, get this though. The reason I brought it up is I've been listening to the uh, top DEA agents and uh, people who worked on the ground in Mexico. And uh, during Trump, Trump was actually saying, "I wish we could just uh, make drugs legal. We wouldn't need DEA agents. Yeah, and the I, cartels would go I away." Lean more towards that as well. Uh, take because the Americans are not going to stop. St- snorting coke they like it too yeah. much so at least decriminalize and allow people to get treatment centers where they could do it safely but wait what i was getting yeah. at is these da guys they're saying the corruption in the government of mexico has never been worse uh, and they're it, the cartels run the top officials in mexico the president uh he says gets uh multiple interviews i've been he- hearing the even the president gets free drugs from the cartels and Trump was offering to send the U.S. military into Mexico to shut down the cartels. And the president of Mexico at the time, he said, no, we'll use hugs, not guns. <laughs> <laughs> hugs, not guns. And so it's just he and these DEA guys. I was like, guys, there's more to the story than that. They're saying it is absolutely the most corrupt it's ever been in the history of these drug cartels existence because they just have so much money and so much influence now. It's never been... They've, they've never been more in control, and that's why they run like pretty much in the open. And there's not anybody like you know killing mad cartels everywhere. And I mean, it's not like a massive war like it could be right now. It's like everybody's looking the other way on purpose. It's pretty. Wild. Yeah, I'm not sure why the cartels are so persistent and so power, powerful over there. It just must be like it probably has a bit to do with their geography, where. Um, Mexico's geography is, if you look at a map, it's actually like pretty terrible geography for living in. Like a lot of it is mountains that are like over a, a mile above sea level, desert. and then you've got desert, and then you've got some like tropical rainforest that's like thick ass trees down south. <laughs> uh, and so, and then uh, everyone's kind of spread out a lot. So you instead of like American cities where you have like a city and then the suburb is outside of it and it's more centralized hmm. everyone's kind of more spread out over these big areas so you have like families who kind of like are in control of um like a town and they like handle the electricity like the utilities like everything like one or two families so for companies who want to go into mexico and like secure contracts for labor or like building up something uh you'd find those families who run these areas and you make a deal with them Mm -hmm. and uh this guy made a joke that uh 
you might end up with a tequila hangover and a new godchild, but uh, mm. you know it, it works out pretty well. Mm. Um, but apparently, like, there's not like the a lot of the workers are spoken for, and like I said, with the labor crunch going back to the baby boomers retiring. So I think there's something like a four hundred thousand a year worker shortage per year Jeez. is going to be expected right now. And it's going to climb over the next 10 years, probably cap out like about a decade from now at like 900,000 jobs short a year. Hmm. So, um, got to get that Tesla um, robot going. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, everything's going to move more towards automation, but the problem is also capital because that requires more capital investment. Oh, right. And there's an idea that capital is like never going to be cheap, like won't be cheaper for a long time than it is now. So some of the advice is if you need to borrow any money for any reason, anyone, any way you could borrow money, do it now because it's only going to get more expensive in the future. Hmm, like, because of interest rates going up or what? No, it's not just interest rates. It's just like because when everyone retire, like when you retire – you sell out of bonds and you sell out of stocks and you will go into cash and like treasury bonds. Mm -hmm. So that kind of affects like that money because we're, ca we're capitalism, we're capital markets. So that money from investors is what enables everything. So there's going to be less of it. So because there's going to be less of it, the, um, the, the yeah it's kind of ends up being the rates that we see the rates are going to be higher across the board for everyone it's not not necessarily saying that the fed is going to keep raising rates but um hmm. on top of that like banks and credit cards and brokers are going to uh, have to raise rates as well because they're not able yeah. to borrow money as easily so they're going to make it harder for you to borrow <laughs> money <clears throat> crazy so yeah so if it's harder for everyone to borrow money then it's harder to do that to build up this new kind of like automation that we're going to need to make up for for a, a shortage of labor which at the same time we're going to uh, be having to build up more industry here to make up for all the stuff that is in china now also what which losing... will end up better in the long run but it's going to be like painful but there's going to be like there there could be an, uh, consistently high inflation but along with the inflation like you should see like wage growth and um i don't know mm -hmm. it could be kind of a good economy as well after a little Speaking rough of, patch of china did you see they have this uh giant uh aircraft carrier that they just launched and they're saying that they're catching up to the u.s uh military as far as capabilities go that looks like a preparation to make a move on taiwan catching up to the u.s military they're really jerking themselves off there <laughs> they're not even close to the capa we're coming out with these new things called fords look them up they're like these super aircraft carriers that the u.s is building mm -hmm. we just came out with our first one I haven't seen and that. basically one of those alone can like challenge all of china <laughs> and we're gonna have like four of them, and then below that we have the the net the Nemitzes, the Nemitzes. Yeah, those know, are the, uh, the the our our current like before biggest class, and the ones that China are coming out with are still a step below that. Oh, okay. So great, up. great. They're they're building up a little bit, but it's still way less uh, capability than the U.S. Had. Like they're not even close to approaching what Good. we got. And all their boats, they got a lot of boats, but they're all small. And they can't get very far out, so you know. Oh, and the whole Taiwan thing. I was even I was on Reddit today, and I was talking in a Tesla investor subreddit about uh, people are all excited because the um, the production of the German uh, Gigafactory, the Tesla factory in uh, Berlin, just hit a thousand cars a week, mm -hmm. and uh, they're comparing it to the China one, and China was. Uh, faster kind of measuring how many cars they made per week since it started up and china has been going faster but that's not surprising because there's a lot of that was a like a simpler time better yeah. time not as many problems now we got 
COVID, we got lockdowns, stopping battery shipments because batteries are being made in China. And that's why no one wants any of their shit made in China anymore because, hmm. like, they're going to have these lockdowns, their population is collapsing, it's expensive to make things there, it's going to be harder to ship things. But uh, this, but I said, you know, yeah, that's great, but, like, let's hope that Russia doesn't shut off natural gas to Germany mm. because I, if I recall correctly, they need natural gas to run the factory, not just electricity. They need natural gas for something they do there. I forget what Germany. it is. You said Germany? Yeah. Yeah. Because no, Germany has reliant. a pipeline yeah, that's connected yeah, directly to Russia. They get a lot of natural gas from them. So no, uh, the Russia China decides connection? to shut that off. I think you were um, from a China connection to Germany then? Uh, I was comparing the the factory in China versus the factory in Germany oh, okay, for the, yeah. the Tesla car factories yeah. for the speed. And I was basically saying, yeah, that that's cool, but we got this thing where they might lose the natural gas, and or Russia might do something else stupid. And the guy a guy responded to me jokingly said, oh yeah, and watch out for uh, China invading Taiwan. <laughs> yeah. And my response to that is, I think that China was considering it before the Ukraine war. And they've been using it for a long time as like a rah, 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 stir people up, yeah. nationalism, make everyone excited. We're going to take back Taiwan one day and our country is so great. And yeah, we're going to do this. So they're giving that to stir things up. But after they saw how things ended up with Ukraine, well, that's you know, like almost a 0% possibility now that they're going to go after Taiwan when yeah. they saw Remember how... The oil how the last podcast, it's easy to cut the oil off in that side exactly. of the world too. That's a major exactly. factor. Exactly. And then, yes, so uh, also, they saw that say, they thought it might be quick, and they saw that, uh, the, you know, so they see the sanctions see? and all the investor support. If those same sanctions are turned against China that are against Russia, China has to import most of their energy and most of their food. Russia but, is makes all their own food and yeah. energy. So if we in, do those sanctions on China... They would be uh, like Ch collapsed within a few months, well, starving right. to death well, and also, unable to move. They did do that drill where they surrounded Taiwan. Uh, I think it was a couple months ago now with uh, ships, and they were doing like a show of military force. So they've been know, doing that for years. I've been following. And the... Taiwan has been and Taiwan has been preparing for this for seventy five years, <laughs> while Ukraine was preparing for the war for eight years. So uh, yeah. and Taiwan is much better military, much better technology. Oh, and by the way, they have a fucking ocean between them and China. Yeah, it's not like just flat land like in Russia where yeah. they had like rail, they had like trains that would go right up to the border, well, and they were also controlled Belarus to the yeah. north and to the south. Yeah, I want to. So they would that. have to. So China would have to send. All these, like, and if you mass up troops, you know, at the at the sea near Taiwan, that takes so long. You have, like, a week plus of notice that, okay, they're setting up to invade. Let's fucking get ready. So they're <laughs> going to have plenty of time to prepare. They're going to put every fucking gun they have up on the beaches pointing at where all those boats are coming. Yeah. So even, like, the best strategy for China would be, like, uh, they just sent a text message to all their soldiers. It's like, hey, go jump in a boat now and just start going so they won't know we're coming. <laughs> Hurry. That might speed it up a little bit. But while they're all coming on these shitty little boats, they're basically like shooting like they're, they're easy targets. So yeah. remember, like you can look in history like D-Day and stuff like that. Yeah. Like uh, there's death. a look up um, Polymatter. Actually, he does really good YouTube videos on mm. this type of stuff. He was like. For uh, amphibious assault, like anyone who saw Saving Private Ryan, you should realize that that's pretty brutal. Yeah, you know, as you're showing up with people with the fucking machine no guns, cover. and the, the door opens to your little boat, it's like, all right, guys, go, go, go. Oh! I guess this is not <laughs> everyone's I getting to fucking boat veteran. I, I heard his story and I heard the emotion just on uh, uh, Memorial Day. I was hearing the emotion behind that guy's uh, voice. Even all these years later, he's an old guy now, and he, he just it still those memories stick with you. But I've been following the Russian uh, yeah, war, and Ukraine war, and uh, Russia actually got some momentum going. They thought that 
they were going to try to do this big, like fast pincer movement around uh, around the uh, Ukrainian troops in the Donbass, which is the farthest east region over there. But Russia mm -hmm. decided, no, they got the more artillery. They got way more troops. They were losing too many, and they got so many people and killed. And they, they couldn't pull it off. If they could have pulled it off, it would have been great because they could have uh, they could have well, cut off this big pocket of Ukrainian forces, but they couldn't connect the pincers. Uh, well, yeah, they probably would have been having a lot of deaths again over and over again. And, uh... Yeah, because so, they anyway, didn't expect Ukraine to be having all these been, weapons and kicking their ass. They've been doing, Russia does have a big uh, artillery advantage. And so they've been doing this like creeping now. barrage of just tons and tons and tons of artillery. And they've been getting yeah. more and more ground and the Ukrainians are being forced to retreat or die. And you know, they just they just blow up, they blow up everything. A civilian, they blow up apartments. Yeah, it's 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 a brutal it's tactic up. that they've come up with a long time ago. But they figure if they blow up every place where people can live, then the people either leave or the people who stay, you could just kill them on sight because you can assume they're they're enemies. Mm. So as a result, they're totally obliterating yeah. every hey. like yeah, it's like gonna be a wasteland where you know uh, it's gonna take forever to rebuild that afterwards. I've seen uh, they got the uh, Ukrainians did get I believe they're uh, uh, were they French I, I, I forget where who they got it from but they got these mobile artillery yeah, yeah. SUVs I, French I shared it on, stuff, on yeah. Twitter it was cool I saw a little mini documentary I shared it on Twitter and uh, the camera crew was in there with them and then showed how advanced the the computers were where these mm. artillery, they're, they're able to shoot and move, shoot and move, and they're going all over these fields to make themselves. Oh, cool. Yeah, and they are able, once they park the machine with, the, I don't know if it's satellite-based or they just do these calculations based on the intel, and the machines mm -hmm. automatically know, exact, the computers know exactly how to aim the artillery, and then they could choose, do you want the uh, artillery shells to blow up while they're still in the air over the target, <laughs> or do you want them to blow up as soon as they hit the ground? And I guess oh. hitting the ground would be hitting a tank or whatever, so they get to Hitting in the, gr in the air would kill people more, probably, because yeah, so of shrapnel yep. going everywhere. Oh, that would crazy. Suck. Yeah. So, so the people, uh, so it's so automated now. It sounds like the people aren't doing that much. It's all uh, like point and click. Yeah. Like, Super simple. Anyone can operate it. And I, I, the Russians have something similar too. I, uh, I guess they were. And saying. they're getting uh, they're getting intel like from like great intel from like sad their satellites, satellites like all the U.S. military satellites. <laughs> they're all pointing. They're all looking at fucking Ukraine right yeah. now. Like. There's no the like troops? like open area that is not being monitored. Exactly. So I'm sure they're telling them exactly where to telling those computers exactly where to shoot. Now. Yeah, and then by the time the Russians try shooting back, hopefully the vehicle is already gone from the spot, and then because they're that's sweet. Yeah, vehicles... cause it's just like a sniper. You gotta move after you shoot. Yeah. Give away and... your position. So these things are going all over the place, and they're all in big, wide-open fields and stuff. And so it's not like yep. you're going to hit some people next to them. Oh, and they were saying these things shoot so many miles. I can't even remember the exact details, but, man, it's so yeah. fascinating. I, and also trench it's combat. I, I've been watching They need more Twitter. of that. More yeah. of that stuff gets sent to, to Ukraine. Yeah, and, it you is. Know, that's, that gives them a chance. They're still outnumbered like 20 to 1 or something like crazy like that to, on infantry. And... Yeah, you know what I heard is the big uh, what would make a huge difference is um, that land bridge that Russia made between Crimea and the mainland. They uh, made this bridge that yep. kind of goes over this part of the ocean, and that's the only part of the land that is able to bring supplies into Crimea. And there's these new missiles that the Ukrainians are look trying to get from like the US. France or is the, the US. US. I think it's France well, or something. The, the but... They were trying to get ones that were, went three times further, and the U.S. was scared to provoke Russia too much, so they only gave them these ones that were more defensive, and they were about one third the range, but still way longer range than what the Ukrainians had before. And so yeah, it, fuck them. I think yeah. it's only going to ramp up from here because it's the you, you're better off throwing everything at it now because it's only going to get worse because yeah. they're not going to stop at Ukraine if they if they win. And so if they could blow that bridge, then uh, you might have you're going to have Crimea cut off. I don't and think they'll hit then, a NATO country though. Why would they hit a NATO country? I don't think they they're they're being so careful. Not oh, to they have Poland. to. Why would they? Well, have yeah, because that's the next step. I don't think they would uh, go for Poland. 
That, oh, for sure, because well, uh, that's scared. they have to. We got nuclear submarines aimed right at them. Like if they start, because remember, they got nukes too. Yeah, but the NATO, so they would be destroying themselves if they attack a NATO country. That's why. Yeah, I, but they think they're gonna die either way. So they think that if they don't expand their territory now to get to these areas that are these geographic choke points, that uh, they're not gonna survive. So. The getting to Ukraine doesn't get you there. You have to get to the other side of Poland and and um, uh, Romania, I think. So they got another like set of countries to go after mm. Ukraine. Uh, otherwise, it's no point of taking Ukraine. It doesn't help them. Well, no, I, uh, I, the reason for Ukraine, they do have a major defensive uh, point there. Like I forget the exact uh, like mountain ranges or whatever it was. It made it so mm -hmm. the Ukraine is their most defensible land point and further east they can get attacked from a wider range of like terrain like all over the place it was something like that and so the ukraine yeah but very it's all important. siberia and shit so it's pretty it's like uh what they told china because china is to the east of them over all the tundra they told china basically if we see you guys moving over the tundra we're just gonna nuke you <laughs> And they don't care if they use nukes there because there's literally no one lives there. It's just empty wasteland of like frozen tundra for yeah, like they said huge areas. Russia also said if the U.S. uses uh, small strategic nuclear weapons, then they're going to nuke England and France or something like that. They said. <laughs> just... Obviously, the U.S. wouldn't use uh, strategic nukes. That would be well, Russia not going to happen. Did. I've said this in the podcast before. Yeah, Russia might. See, they're gonna, they're gonna, the stuff they say, it's all uh, double speak. You know, 1984, remember double speak? Yeah. <laughs> it's all like the opposite, or they're saying things that, uh, that they're gonna do and try to put like they're they're doing all this crazy like trying to shift the narrative, saying like, oh. Uh, we're just reclaiming former Russian territory. Oh, and you can't join NATO because <laughs> you aren't legally a country. Uh, so too bad. If you were a country, you could join NATO, but you're not. Well, so fin sorry. What was it? Finland and Sweden are in the process of applying, or they did apply, and now they're in the process of reviewing. Yeah, Turkey, they're going to get in. Well, Turkey was being... Uh, yeah, wasn't. they're being a dick. Yeah, they were like preventing it. All you need is one yeah. country to say no, and you're not in? Is yeah. It? Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Triggered, you get yeah. overridden. But what's the point? Why is Turkey being angry? I, I know that they were. I explained but... that to you last time. Oh, yeah. What, what was it again? I forgot. It was just that uh, one of Turkey's enemies is getting supplied by Finland and Sweden. Hmm. They're selling arms to them. Oh, okay. And to before, it just the, the what probably wasn't on the Sweden and Finland's radar that much because they didn't care about Turkey. They had no interactions with Turkey beyond that so now that they have a common interest they're gonna have to you know get along and uh, you know for them dropping that stuff isn't a big deal now what turkey is trying to do now is they're just trying to get extra cons it's like they're one of those like asshole senators like <laughs> with like mansion or cinema where you need 50 all 50 votes of senators so if you're willing to be the one asshole senator who says no mm -hmm. then uh, you can get extra goodies for yourself because they have to give it to you to convince you to go on their side. Of course, so, in the case of Manchin, he didn't give a also, fuck because he's already getting paid from an outside, <laughs> you know, yeah. outside the government. So he doesn't give a fuck what the government offers. I him. forgot to mention uh, there was a U.S. report, official intelligence report that came out. I think it was last month. They say Putin had surgery for cancer. He like disappeared for a brief amount of time. I think now it might have been three months ago or so. Or you know how old ago. he is. No, I forget. Uh, Seventy something. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he's up I there. Mean, answer is like pretty fairly common as you get older. Yeah. Yeah, and so also there's a lot of discontent even amongst the, especially the oligarchs in uh, Russia, and there's a lot of talk that Putin's going to be on his way out, but it's not to the point where it's going to be Wishful like an, thinking. Over, an overthrow or a coup. Would be nice, but uh, uh, probably not. They're yeah. saying, yeah, at this time, because he's so well protected and being very paranoid, and uh, yeah, hopefully yeah. we'll he's have a killed peaceful, anyone who is. Hopefully there'll be some peace in the end here. I don't want to see this escalate. But see, the Russia has been. Not careful. until the Russian military dies. 
Well, no, but they they have been careful not to actually. Well, too. how it looks now is that yeah, no one wants nuclear war, but uh, the uh, the most likely scenario, what it looks like now, is that Ukraine will be able to hold out for a while, like maybe another six months, unless something really breaks in their favor, and then they're probably going to lose to Russia. And then they're yeah. going to become like a Vietnamese, like guerrilla style warfare where yeah. there's going to be big groups who are just running around fucking shit up and they're just going to blow up everything that is of use to the Russians. So they'll blow up all the overland natural gas, oil pipelines. Um, and like as we said before in the previous video, that uh, starts uh, like kicks into overdrive the the global starvation and yeah, uh, energy stuff. crisis uh i was gonna say i heard some military experts actually say that what happens now in the donbass like in this immediate time is like super critical because russia may actually be running out of money and resources to continue this fight up and so if they can't continue this fight maybe they'll just retreat back and accept their uh, small country well not even small it's still giant but smaller than they would like and uh yeah maybe they would uh hopefully get some trade relations going again and de-escalate that'd be really nice and with putin being overthrown and then the next people coming in offering some reparations some apologies i would love to see that happen and then just i would love to too but sorry to be a downer but from what i've heard the minimum historically for the Russians to uh, make any change and admit defeat is they'd have to lose at least 500,000 soldiers. And right, as it stands right now with the amount of soldiers dead, they'd uh, have to lose 12 times what was killed already. So unless the Ukrainians could kill at least 12 times more soldiers than they've killed now, it's probably not going to uh, be enough to change their minds because, like I said, Russians' demographics are shit. And uh, they don't mind throwing a bunch of bodies at this because uh, yeah. as their country collapses, it's not a bad thing for them to have less uh, young men who could possibly overthrow the government yeah. once uh, they're gonna get things weaker. go to shit. If you missed the last podcast, Russia is right now at the point of the as strong as they're going to be. The demographics as they get older, they're going to be less and yeah. less, and they're going to be older and older, and they're going to be weaker, basically, of and China's going to be even worse. Uh, by 2050, the population of China is going to be less than half of what it is now. So we're like not that bad compared to those countries, huh? With our birth right. rates and stuff. Like, how, yeah, you know, we're not uh, going to get to replacement levels uh, and until like the 2040s. Like, we're going to have sh worker shortages until the 2040s, and it's going to kind of start to turn around a little bit. Mm -hmm. And us being close to Mexico, which has more younger. Uh, a higher birth rate is also a big help to us because we sell a lot of stuff to Mexico. Cool, yeah. Interesting. Let me see if I got... What else? Oh, yeah, we should get into that uh, in New Mexico, Otero County, uh, the division in the United States. We had uh, some electorates uh, rebellion, basically, from three GOP uh, county commissioners. Uh, they were refusing to ratify the, uh, or not, is that the right word? Yeah, uh, no, certify the uh, election results. And uh, the state, so they were saying, no, we're just not going to do it because they were concerned over the Dominion voting uh, systems, I just found out. And that's the same, like, conspiracy stuff, basically, that Trump and the supporters were saying about Dominion. And Dominion is like, what are you talking about? Oh, why they, are you stealing our election? We know Trump should have won. Well, Dominion was suing the My you, Pillow guy and the and the news. Uh, one American News was it, or uh, one of the other like more conspiracy uh, oriented yeah. ones? And I think Giuliani as well, because they were they yeah, were, defamation. Yeah, they're saying they're innocent and prove it basically. So, I well, guess... yeah, because that hurts their their that hurts their product, and exactly. like if they have a stock, it hurts their stock price. If just, just like... because some political party is a bunch of whiny little bitches, yeah. and they then they think it could work that they make up this big <laughs> lie and just keep repeating it and get everyone to latch onto it. You know, they'd rather do that than admit reality. <laughs> and, uh, you know, obviously, yeah, and this company, it's going to hurt this company. So they got the short end of the stick. They're trying to provide fucking election machines to make the thing <laughs> run. It's, it's like it's like if uh, for some reason you made like washing machines and like uh, the, you fucked up like the president's shirt and some like dictatorship. And they said all your washing machi machines are shit. 
and no one buy your washing machines and you got a bunch of like dumbasses who are like those washing machines are un-american <laughs> we're not gonna buy them anymore <laughs> So that they have to go, they have to like, yeah, sue them and try to, uh, you know, do something to to slow that down. Otherwise, they're just gonna yeah. end up bankrupt. So about the electric, we definitely thing. need a paper ballot trail, though. Which uh, yeah. all the every everyone has a paper ballot trail <laughs> because uh, all the electronic stuff is uh, is just not. It's like it's it's okay. It's pretty decent, but. There's been Vegas conventions where they brought in a hacker yeah. oh, I know. and it was Bad. able to hack a machine in like 15 easy. minutes. Very easy. Anyone with like a USB drive who has a, could just pop it in there, can yeah. change the bulk, uh, totals on stuff. So yeah, or just the, that's why you I need saw paper one, ballots. It was just the, trouble, the very standard issue troubleshooting option menu. You just go into the menu and change any number to whatever you want on one of them. <laughs> It's so dumb. Yeah, or like there's like uh, you look you like hold down like two keys and it gets you into admin mode and then like the <laughs> password is like admin <laughs> and, then, and then you're in there and you can like change anything you want. Like so, there's ridiculous stuff like like you once if you work in IT at all like I have you'll see like people there's so many dumbass people out there yeah. and <laughs> oh, they, they're, they're, they're terrible on security. Like everyone wants to make their password one two three four. <laughs> or admin, you know, unless you force, unless they, they're they physically not allowed to. You know, uh, my dad many years ago worked for uh, tech support for the florists and uh, like flower makers and all that stuff. And uh, these yeah. people were so out of touch with computers. He's like, he said, uh, put the mouse on the screen. You see the mouse on the screen? And they literally physically picked up the mouse <laughs> and they put, it, they put it on the screen, like wiggling the physical mouse. Does this on the help? <laughs> It's like, all right, what, what next? It's like, wait, you're, what are you doing? You're putting the mouse on the screen. <laughs> you remember uh, that movie? Uh, remember Zoolander, yeah. where uh, they're telling the male models where they're really dumb, and they're like, <laughs> the files are in the computer, and they're like, in the computer, and they're like looking at the monitor, and they're like, they're like, and then they act like they're like, <laughs> they act yeah. like monkeys, and they're like hitting it, and then they're finally like, he picks it up, and he's like, I'm gonna get the files out of the computer, and he like throws it, and it <laughs> smashes on the ground. Nice, <laughs> and everyone's like, You fucking idiot. <laughs> Well, here, we can finish this electorate story, though. So then, oh uh, fuck! I, I thought of something else. There was a similar thing about oh. some dumb fucks who were doing the same thing, but I, I can't right. remember. Well, uh, anyway, so these GOP guys were refusing to uh, certify, and then eventually the Supreme Court ruled they had to by Friday, and then they were saying, "No, we're not going to do it." And then the Attorney General was getting involved and starting to threat threaten them with uh, real legal penalties and jail or whatever. Right. So then, two of the three. Uh, oh shit we can go to jail for this yeah two oh, of the no. three caved and then so they had to certify and there was 7,300 votes at stake and then until those were in they couldn't certify the overall election results for all of New Mexico so all yeah right. yep and all this shit started because of Trump now well, now we're going to have to deal with more of this shit where all these dumb asses are getting yeah. these bright ideas well, yeah, this is all bullshit anyway, so let me uh, let me try to see what I can do to fuck this up. You know, I know <laughs> well, better. The country's going to... Oh, you hear what happened? Seven Colbert staffers, including the Triumph, the insult, insult dog. Yeah, got that led dog is hilarious. Him. Yeah, he was one of them, I guess. I don't know if he was in dog form when he went into the Capitol, but they were inside the Capitol, and Someone called Adam, the cops on him. Adam Schiff let them in. And, like, you're supposed to have constant supervision from a staffer or whatever when you let somebody in. Adam Schiff just let him in, oh, and he just, uh, they were going to, like, Republican offices, like, pounding oh, on the doors. And so uh, that guy should get in trouble. Like, you're just letting people in to go harass the opposing party. That's nuts. Sounds like <laughs> some pussy nitpicking to me, like harassing. Like, first of all, well, a lot of people can go up. They walked and... around in the building. They didn't even damage anything. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> This walk rod didn't damage anything. <laughs> yeah, they were yeah. There even people the, who were like talking about killing pants. Even the QAnon like shaman a, was there, and he was standing in the main uh, building right there in the main what's it called, the congressional hall where they do the speeches or whatever. I forget what it's called. And he was there, and nobody was damaging anything. They were just people who were pissed. But yeah, I saw those guys. Uh, that was a part of the I doubt, January. I doubt that no one damaged anything. I'm sure there was damage. There was like, but. A little bit, but like but you don't even need uh, you don't even need people to come in to to 
you have GOP uh, people who are in Congress who go harassing other people. Who's that nut? So Lauren Bobart, something like that, is her name. Oh, there's the one with the She's gun. One those... to bring the gun. Yeah. In. No, I don't think yeah, she, she was the one. Oh, the, the one that was a QAnon girl. Uh... What the heck was her name? Well, she's part. Of, she's in Congress, whatever she is, and yep. she's gone to like uh, whenever, like she goes to Democratic uh, senators' offices and shit, and she she'll pound on their door. She'll like have a camera, say all this like insane shit, and you know just kind of grandstanding and being a Same with you know ever, all an asshole. Them, like, they're all annoying, like. Uh... AOC was lying, saying that she almost died on January 6th, even though she was in the building across the street, totally safe. And then, like, this police officer was knocking on her door to warn her. And then she's, like, complaining about the tone of the police officer. She just, all these delusional people on both sides. Uh, what was the other one? Hmm. Ah, I, I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> there was but another one. That dog is funny. And, yeah, he, uh, it is. You should let him in there to rip on those people. Was he, Did he have the dog puppet on him or not? I don't know. Must have. That's how it works. Well, there were seven people, and it wasn't. If only... you want to look up, um, one of the best Triumph the Dog uh, skits is. Yeah, I think he went to like a Star Wars convention. I seen that one with the Darth Vader. And he was talking shit it, to all the Star Wars fans. Says, which one of those buttons pick, has your mom come pick you up to the Darth <laughs> yeah. Vader guy? Yeah. I yeah. That. that guy's good at improv. I'm, uh, yeah. hope, I, th hope, I think it's the same guy who runs the puppet. Hopefully. Well, this was the reason why they were at the Capitol, though, was on behalf of Colbert. Does he do the dog for Colbert? I know he does have his own yeah. separate show. He has the separate show, though. Did, yeah, it started, I think, uh, under uh, Colbert. No, Conan O'Brien had it years ago. Was it? Oh, yeah, okay. Colbert yeah. wasn't even a. Uh, uh, remember, he was on Comedy Central when Triumph already existed. And uh, so it was started under Colbert. Uh, I heard he got his own new show, though, so I don't know if he... Like many good things, maybe Conan invented it first. Yeah, like The Simpsons. He was really <laughs> he was a good writer for The Simpsons. He was a writer, yeah. yeah. He didn't invent it, but he was great. Yeah, he's still good. Um, I think he's going to start up a new, uh, some kind of new podcast or something. His show's um, been gone for a while now? Going. Yeah, he's yeah. been off uh, the air. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I'll always see like a YouTube video pop up of him uh sometimes on my feed and uh yeah, he's always he's good for a laugh. <laughs> oh, you know what I just saw uh Biden uh had a, a his little bike accident and somebody made a meme of Joe Rogan like how he's always interviewing all these messed up fighters like they're half out of it. So somebody made a meme of Joe Rogan's arm around Biden on the ground like with the microphone in his face. <laughs> that was How do you feel right now? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it happened until I seen that meme and then I was like what's going on here? Like uh I didn't know what the meme was at first, but yeah. Yeah, memes are spreading faster than the news now. Yeah, on Twitter, Twitter's just real fast. But I actually love looking at all that war stuff. I've been sharing it on my Twitter on uh, Ukraine because it's just you, you don't get the full picture when you're watching the news on the mainstream media where you got a map and they'll be like, you know, wiggling their finger around showing you. Yeah, it's too dumbed down. All yeah. the news media is too dumbed down. What's cool is I, I got direct access to people who are Ukrainians or Russians, whatever, and they're putting up these really wild videos. There's this one really awesome video. It was actually from the Russians. Uh, they had these, like, uh, attack helicopters near a lake. and Ooh. It, it was – no, but there was people on the ground, uh, and they were bringing these attack helicopters, like, doing these dangerous stunts. And these people on the ground were recording it, and these helicopter blades are, like, coming dangerously close to them as the helicopter's on an angle, like, mm. barely missing them. And we stuff. have great – Great safety in the Russia. It's, it's interesting, <laughs> though, just how you see these Russian workers soldiers. Workers' comp, no <laughs> problem. <laughs> Vodka is workers' <laughs> comp. <laughs> workers' <laughs> comp is, you have no more head, comrade. Your worries <laughs> are over. You have served the motherland well. Yeah. like It's interesting, though, when you I see... Like on both sides, like you got just young men who are just doing what their countries have told them to do. And if you go back to World War One or World War Two, even there's times of humanness where they're letting each other go into no man's land and grab the injured without blowing their brains out. And they're like waving a little flag, or like keeping their hands up. And then their hopes are when one of your guys are injured, hopefully they're not going to shoot you when you're trying to help one of your guys. 
And so you had yeah. a lot of stories like you that. You have both sides of it. You have the full range. You have atrocities. You yeah. have some incredible moments <laughs> of kindness. But yeah, there was a, you know, a uh, they're moment. also murdering civilians. They're doing extermination. They're taking yeah. a bunch of children oh, the and they're bad. relocating them to Russia so yeah. that they, the population can't recover. The Russians in Ukraine. have been horrible for sure. Definitely yeah. way worse than the Ukrainians. They're, yeah, there's this new thing where they've been uh, just murdering like groups of civilians and uh, yeah mass graves are being found uh, horrible i found this cool thing on instagram there's a ukrainian guy uh who has been raising money for the ukrainian army um with um uh he started this service where uh if you pay like 40 dollars you can get a message written on a artillery shell that will be shot at the russians (laughs) wow (laughs) It's awesome, and I was watching. It's really popular on Reddit. Uh, so you could write whatever message you want on there. Uh, oh, what were some of the messages? People, some of them were just like Happy Father's Day, like Zach or whatever. Some people are using them for Father's Day presents. Some were like, wow. uh, uh, there was like some cringy anime one where I don't even. It's like woo is like something like I don't know. Anime people say. Uh, there was some ah fuck I forget what the messages I actually liked were, but there were some pretty good ones. Hmm. Um, Not all your base are belong to us. <laughs> there should be like, but you know there are a lot of like cool like internet memes that are being put on there, and That's it's a weird awesome. Way to so die. Uh, killed by a meme. Yeah. <laughs> but I was gonna say this cool story Great. from World War One that just it reminded me when I was saying that uh, there was this encounter in a trench. It was all foggy and smoky and and. Uh, I believe it was uh, yeah, an English or a French uh, soldier found a, a German one and he was aiming the rifle at him and the German was like, wait, wait, wait. And like he allowed him to go slowly and pull out this picture and it showed a picture of him and his wife and his kids and everything. And they had this. And like, then you human... shoot him in the face. <laughs> the, op- <laughs> the opposite of a Hollywood. Oh, I know but, uh, whose wife I'm going to rape now. She yeah. looks hot. Where does she live? That's <laughs> But they had a good moment. Take one last look at her. And look. <laughs> yeah, but obviously the opposite happened there, and uh, I he want let him live. To bleed and, on the picture. Yeah. Speaking of that, remember I told you earlier about that Rome thing with the barbarian. Oh, remember Germans. that thing in Saving Private Ryan where they meet each other and the Jewish guy gets killed. Uh, where they're in a room well. and like uh, he's hiding. Uh, you know, they're like in some side room. And uh, he meets another Russian uh, or German soldier, and they're one on one, and they're like close combat with like a knife. And first, he has the edge, and he's like trying to get you, like, (laughs) oh, yeah, he's like trying to drive the knife like into his eyeball. Oh, yeah, and the German guy like turns it or they like flip over, turn it around on him, and suddenly he's on top of him, got all his weight on it, he's pushing the blade into the other guy's chest. And it just starts to, and he's like, and uh, he's like, <laughs> trying to stop it, and, and then like, uh, and, like it starts to go in. And he's like, oh no, 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 so uh, back to that Rome one, though. Uh, so they were so outnumbered. It was Caius Marius and uh, his troops. They were just observing these barbarians as they saw, as they viewed them. They were most likely look at how the barbarians copulate. Interesting. Well, well, yeah, like they would be practicing with their axes and stuff, and they were just because this was the first time they were ever having contact with them ever. They never even knew. I mean, hel- like helicopter penises. What? The helicopter with your penis, where you oh. jump in a circle. <laughs> That'd be funny. Like we've never seen that before. Well, no, speaking of that, like uh, you're <laughs> gonna. <Speaking of> that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. What is the segue? In the northern, in the northern Italy, you know, there's the Alps there. With oh yeah, Italians love to do that and shit. So, yeah. so they were over there at one point, and then for some reason, just to show that the the cold was not bothering them because they're from these like cold countries where it's like. All you know, tons of forest and snow everywhere. They got all naked and they were riding their uh, their shields down like sleds, like our ancient snowboarding. And so, all nice. right. But back to the original story. They're at the fort, and then 
I know? would not want to get naked before I did that, though. Uh, like, yeah. <laughs> so they were just saying, oh, this ain't bothering us. What is this? Is this bothering you? Is what he explained, like, how the sentiment was in a hardcore history episode. But because the Romans were not... They got uh, lonely with no women around for long periods of time. Well, so, no, they were yeah. traveling with their families and their kids. And the Germans, uh, say, during some, certain fights, when the Germans would run away, the women would actually grab axes and start killing their husbands because they were cowards for running away from battle. And this was a, a well-established thing that happened in the ancient world. The women would just start attacking enemies and their husbands alike with axes <laughs> or swords or whatever way they could and find you wonder why we don't want to get married <laughs> all right but back to the original story let me see if i can get it <laughs> out fine uh so they're at the the you floor my space I shut. and they're <laughs> and they're all uh so these uh you know Germans what they're doing was... they're they're making themselves look good to the winning side so they figure they kill their husbands and they're getting in good already with the men of the other side. So they're basically uh, moving on to the were, new husband. Yeah, but as the Romans were pursuing, they were killing <laughs> like, the ah, Romans ah. too. <laughs> they were killing the Romans too, though, is what I'm saying. So, it, it, all right. So no, the Germans right. were screaming to the Romans saying, yeah, we're going to see your wives first before you see them. Yeah, because the, the uh, Romans were. <laughs> I saw your mom last night. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's where they were wrong. They got to this river, and then Caius Marius was saying, all right, you guys are thirsty? Go and get that drink, but first you have to kill these guys in order to get your drink. And uh, they were disorganized. But the Germans were disorganized by the river, and that's what the turning point of this German invasion where they started steamrolling them after that point. And the brilliant uh, generalship is what turned the war around. And so oh, yeah, yeah. I love ancient history. Got to use the land. Got yeah. to use the land to your advantage. Yeah, and after that fight, they had an area where they were able to hide some thousands of troops in the forest, and then this uh, combat broke out. Then whenever you get an army behind the enemy and they start routing and running away, that's when the majority of the casualties happen. Like, yeah, you should just stand your ground and fight to the death to the exactly, last man. Exactly, but human nature, we're animals. It's either uh, you know fight or flight. But once you and so the Mongols actually took advantage of that before. They would leave a little opening on purpose, knowing that the people were going to start trying to run towards the opening, but the opening was the trap, you know, using human psychology. And then they would just surround people and just dominate them, basically. Like, ancient warfare is just so fascinating. Let them, let them get in there a little bit. Yeah, and you just, uh, it's going on right now. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people are following it pretty closely. I follow it, like, tangent, tangentially. What, the uh, yeah, yeah, like uh, I, uh, I like to just keep uh, tabs on like how it's progressing, looking for good news out of, you know, the Ukrainians doing better, and you know, hopefully they kill all enough Russians so they turn around and, and stop all this shit. And um, to make it so it's not working for them, that would be nice. Even if they just yeah. kill enough where the Russians are like, all right, we're not going to try taking another country now. That would be nice. If they put up that. Yeah. Much. If if they take over Ukraine, though, it really seems like uh, they they would be moving on, and it just seems like everyone realized this in the West, and that's why they're giving so much aid and why everyone banded together so much that they got this whole kind of long long term strategy kind of figured out here. So everyone knows what the end game is. That's why everyone's taking the steps they are right now. What about now. Vietnam, like, though? Didn't they it's say like a chess game? The domino effect was going to happen, but we. Uh, Vietnamese, uh, it, the U.S. lost that war and the commies took over. And did they spread that to other nations after Vietnam? No, right? I, not that I can think of. Spread what? Communism. Like, the Viet Cong won that. You know, the oh. U.S. had to evacuate. And the whole threat, the whole reason why we got in was they were saying there was going to be this domino effect. And that was going to fall, and then the next, and the next, and the next. And then... But like looking back at Vietnam was I, I can't recall if there was other communist ones that spread. What about Cambodia? I, I forget about my uh, the timing of everything in history. No like, idea. Yeah. But now I don't think Vietnam is is Vietnam even uh, does even use communism. I believe so. It, it uh, they won out over there, and I don't think there's been a regime change since. It's interesting because, like, I know that Vietnam does do trade, and the is, um, you know, there's some like manufacturing that goes on in Vietnam. 
that uh, hmm. you know we get we buy a lot of products from Vietnam. So yeah, it's, uh, yeah that kind of seems to have integrated uh, globally. Yeah, I'm gonna ask my uh, phone real quick. Yeah, you talk. I'm gonna mute Go my mic it. and ask. So <laughs> all right. Yeah, but uh, yep. Anyone who messes with the Vietnamese, uh, that's bad time. And the Chinese did it before the Americans went in. Um, they got wrecked, and then for some reason the Americans went in, and uh, they. Uh, yeah, eh, I, I got the just, answer. Uh, Here's what it came up on Google: Vietnam, also known as the Socialist Republic of Vietnam, is also one of the four remaining communist countries. In Vietnam's third constitution, written in 1980, the Communist Party was uh, stated as the only party to represent the people and lead the country. Cuba is currently a communist one as well. It's pointing out. So yeah. What's so, yeah. the what's what's the third one besides? Uh, I know China is one of them. So uh, China, Vietnam, Cuba, and what else? Uh, Laos. North oh, Korea. Man, that's too. next door. Yeah, it actually says there's five. Oh, that's five. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, China, Cuba, Laos, North Korea, Vietnam. But wait. Didn't, didn't exactly take the world by storm. What about Russia itself? Russia is just a uh, dictatorship. It's not communist it's not anymore. Communist it's, anymore. Hmm. No, it's, it's a democratic system. Interesting. It's just crony capitalism. It's just a, like a more corrupt version of the U.S. Where, ah, okay, yeah. It says, like, I found it. It says, technically, Russia today is a multi-party representative democracy. In yeah. fact, experts are even split as to whether Russia's former state, the USSR, was communist, socialist, or state capitalist government. At any rate, Russia's 1993 constitution declared the country a democratic, what the heck, federative, law-based state with the republican government hmm yeah i guess rigged elections though everybody says oh yeah for sure yeah <laughs> people going to jail for opposing the putin i would like yeah. to i would like to see an interview with the opposition leader there was a lot of people who was backing yeah, him up That'd be fun to... Well, that Navalny guy was the opposition leader yeah. and uh he went back and got poisoned and put in jail He's in jail now, right? And he's all... Oh, yeah, his face is all, like, messed up right now, right? That's that guy? That yeah, thing? I don't know. He was. I heard he was going on a hunger strike for a little bit. Yeah, and... one of them had a real deformed face now from, like, the poison or whatever. It uh, really messed him up. Like, if you go... Oh, I saw, I saw pictures, probably not from this, but uh, there was a guy who... Uh, this was, like, 100 years ago... He had like headaches, or he, he got in some. It was a wealthy man, and at the time there was a guy made this tonic that had radium in it, so it's hmm. basically a radioactive <laughs> uh, tonic, and he marketed it as like a cure all that was like a pain reliever, and he gave a kickback to all the doctors who prescribed it. What year was for that? every dose? I don't know uh, exactly what year, uh. but uh, you know before there was widespread knowledge of how bad. Uh, <laughs> putting radio nuclear radioactive things in products was uh, so this guy took this uh, radium <laughs> for like uh almost a year like daily he would like uh put this thing you know swallow this tonic or put it in his mouth a fallout video and game. <laughs> before he died uh, there were the, I, I saw a picture of him uh his whole lower jaw had fallen off Ugh. and uh his like skin was all gone so and so it was like his throat hole and like some most Jesus. of his teeth is falling out he had like a couple teeth and like this whole part was just missing so just all like gory red exposed was he like, feeling any you know. benefits from this or something why would you continue yeah he said for uh, for a while it said it <laughs> made him feel peppy and toned up hmm. so but how, uh that how long did he stopped have... and he started getting headaches and then at that point he stopped, and then the radiation just did its thing after he stopped. Is that a yeah, Ugh. yeah, yeah? Cause it's a, kind of a can be a slow process. Yeah, like to a lag. Did you get? Yeah. Did, did you see that Chernobyl uh, TV show that came? Oh, out? and uh, holes opened up in his skull. Ugh. <laughs> Have you seen that Chernobyl uh, 
uh, cool mini series that came out. Like I don't know. Yeah, I was thinking about rewatching it again. Yeah, actually, it I got a higher quality version. That's a good and, actor. Uh, but yeah, it shows like how yeah. messed up that situation was, and like don't they have like deformed animals and fish like over there and stuff? Like the Simpsons used to make fun of that. Even I remember them showing like three eyed fish and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, that popped into my head too. <laughs> um, I think uh, I don't know. Um, I'm there. There might be some, but it's uh, you know a lot of uh, a lot of. St- animals just tend to die from the radiation poisoning mm-hmm. it's the you know i guess if you're like in the development process then you're more likely to have some kind of deformity because it's damaging the dna as the like as the Japan. thing that's growing is trying to read the dna which is the blueprint to create whatever you are it's reading the wrong dna because it's yep. getting knocked by these uh 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 these particles from the radiation is shooting out super fast and it's going through your skin and everything and it's knocking into the DNA particles. So then it's reading the wrong thing. So then it builds your amino acids, your proteins build the wrong thing. And then you end up with like extra eye or, you know, whatever. In Japan, remember after the nukes were dropped, the radiation left over, they were having a lot of birth defects for many, many years. I don't even know if it, like when it would have even stopped after the nukes were dropped there. But yeah, that was yeah. real mess. Oh, the nukes were dropped. I was thinking Fukushima. Yeah, uh, in Japan. Yeah, they, then the pretty humans. well controlled. Um, uh, they didn't have like uh, I know Elon went made a show of going over there and eating some vegetables and stuff uh, that was grown in the area. In Japan? Or? Yeah, no, yeah, no. in Japan. Because uh, there is a uh, there's. Um, I mean, it's tricky because nu- nuclear power is zero emission, so it w- it does it's good for climate, uh, assuming that it could be done with in a way that produces less waste, mm-hmm. and the waste could be safely stored for twenty thousand years. Yeah. <laughs> and no one messes with it and it doesn't leak into anything. I mean, it is amazing. It's scary. If if you can do everything perfectly, mm-hmm. it's just that there's so little, like, room for error with it. That, Earthquakes. Uh, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of nice. areas that don't have natural disasters where you could put them, where they'd be pretty safe. So you don't have to worry about natural disasters. And there's new types of reactors where... Um, they don't need like a lot of reactors were built so they need power to prevent a meltdown in case so they have like backup generators and stuff um which because they need a way to cool the core if um um if the main reactor loses power but you can build them in a way now where um it basically the the core would like fall into something that puts it out there's like a plug and it like falls into something. So even if you lose all power, you still wouldn't have a meltdown, which is good. And you can make a reactor where it's like a breeder reactor. Mm-hmm. And you can have like two reactors paired. And most of the stuff that the one makes could be put into the other one. And then it kind of goes back and that could be burned up in the other one so that you actually have much less waste. What about um, like solar flares and comets and asteroids and stuff though? Like... I guess. Yeah. Well, that's where the meltdown proof part comes in. Yeah. So it would cool itself out. And um, as long as it's like not being exploded and like thrown up in the air, like it was in Chernobyl, where it was mm-hmm. like a fire was carrying all these this radioactive particles into the air and spreading, you know, for miles and miles around. Wasn't and it-, it was threatening to sink into an underground, you know, because uh, there's water underground oh, everywhere. Yeah, water. It was gonna, it was gonna melt through the ground into the groundwater. Yeah. Then once it's in direct contact with the water and it's all connected, then like a whole continent was gonna be poisoned pretty Wasn't, much. Uh, did, didn't that uh, the reason why Chernobyl had that meltdown? They used some like faulty, cheap parts. And some of the reactors isn't wasn't that in that series? I never learned about the history of it directly, but it was in the series where they were talking about some critical components. They cheaped out on it to save money, and that's why they were probably in there's. A, I think there was some design flaw that yeah, um, they they knew about, but they made it top secret because they didn't want to admit that they made a mistake. 
<laughs> so well, that's one thing because they always wanted to appear better than they were, yep. and they were too like uh, much about their image, and um, and then you just had this uh, all these like local you had like local bureaucrats who were not necessarily good at their job, like they just came in and they were given control of something that they didn't necessarily know oh, anything about. That. And then everyone was like all about their own career and moving up. So you had all these like you throw caution to the wind and do all these things that are risky do. to prove your career <laughs> and you just threaten people under you. So then people do stupid things and um <laughs> Oh, then you know, you under I got a face. cool story about that. Speaking of that, oh, it, I got a thing about how corruption works in China too. Uh, this is we got to check out polymatter, but this but is I'll a Russia related that. one. Yeah, yeah, in World War II, uh, everybody was so scared of telling their superiors in Russia that something could not be done. I'm listening. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> so so that, like uh, I forget what rank the guy was, but he had a bunch of guys under him on the battlefield and. Uh, he was saying he just got orders that uh, everybody had to cross a river. And everybody was saying that, you know, there's no way they could cross this river. But they were so scared that, to say they couldn't cross it that they wound up like I think 20 or 30 people went into this river and like all drowned. And then they, <laughs> like, and they knew idiot. they were going to die. It's like, but they were so scared of the superiors and the torture and the tactics that Stalin was using and all that stuff that, they literally went into this river and drowned rather than say no. And the superior guy yeah. was saying, we did what you said. And like, like that's yep. how faulty it is when you're going by that much fear that to drown or to risk drowning, maybe they didn't think they were, that maybe they thought they had a chance of surviving at least, but no. Yeah, right. That's another thing that's fucking over China is because uh, even more so than Putin, people are afraid to bring bad news to Putin and to bring real information to Putin. But the China's leader's on a whole nother level where that uh, Xi guy, uh, people are terrified of telling him anything. Huh. So, like, they don't only, like, not bring him bad news. Like, they don't give him any news at all. Jeez. So, uh, like, the so it's like, and he runs, like, literally everything. Like, whatever he says goes. And he's just shot the messenger so many times that now... Even though he says something, he's so misinformed of the facts on the ground that the thing he wants might not be possible. Hmm. Yet, they just they'll just kind of go along with it, and it will just get worse and worse until it blows up in your face. <laughs> but I'm not the so guy like, who told him. <laughs> yeah. So uh, like they had these power blackouts, and like uh, they didn't uh, they could have done something about it for months, and. Like, she didn't know about it until, like, he could see, like, from his house, like, large blocks, like, <laughs> the power going out. Because everyone's so afraid to tell him about this thing. Jeez. So it's like, imagine if, like, a company was, like, had a CEO, and there were no one, no one under him was allowed to make any decisions. Uh, yeah. Yes, the CEO has to make every single decision to make the company run. <laughs> like, that company would not be able to do anything. That guy would be so overloaded. Yep. But... It's like that, except he doesn't. No one tells him what's going on. They're too scared, and uh, so he can't make informed decisions. Oh, like their pigs. Uh, they just had like all their pigs slaughtered recently, and uh, now what? they have like some sickness. Uh, that had, around? yeah, that had a sickness. Yeah, so they had to slaughter most of them, and then like they fucked over all the people who were the pig farmers. They mm. just lost out, weren't compensated. Instead, what they did is they gave new money to new farmers to come in, and there was just subsidies. And those people came in, had no idea what they were doing. They weren't pig farmers. They just—it was a money grab where you could get free government government money. Jeez. All you had to do is say you're attempting to raise a pig farm. <laughs> so they're doing—they're doing a terrible job trying to raise pigs. That's even more fuck. They're—they're uh, they're even more diseased than before. <laughs> and now the whole thing is going to happen again. At the same time that this whole thing is going on with this food crisis, they're going to be like out of they uh, all their pigs because of disease so it's Jeez. just another double whammy for them uh, and i think about how corruption works in china is um apparently they do do a kind of a smart thing where they realize that there's always going to be corruption 
but mm. uh, they do it in such a way in China where the bad corruption is where you just extract value and it's like robbery would be like the worst form of it. You just rob people and you give them nothing in return. Mm. Like how it's kind of set up in China now is that public workers make like no money. Like they're paid like starvation wages where if they only were living on the salary their job gave them, they wouldn't be able to survive. Hmm. So corruption is a necessity at that Jeez. point. But the way they set it up is that um, they uh, the bribes that come into them are helping uh, like new businesses bypass like regulations and like stuff that slows them down. Mm -hmm. So at least it's like stimulating the economy a little bit because you have to. So any business who wants to start has to do a bunch of bribes, <laughs> but so uh, at least at least it kind of happens. So it gives them the money <laughs> to survive, but and you know they still pocket. So and like they don't get income. But what happens is like they end up getting all these like uh, mm -hmm. perks, like they get like vacations and like golf and like <laughs> uh, all these things say, like are become like perks for the government employees over there. Heard, apparently, uh, there was a, a lady I saw in an interview. She was I think running for office somewhere in the United States. She grew up in China and was there. And she says the old regime was the red coats or the red jackets. I forget which word she used. And uh, mm -hmm. there's this new regime that's there, like not from top down or whatever, but it, this is a regime that's uh, the white jackets or white coats, they're saying. And these guys are way more tyrannical and hardcore and worse in every way. And this is the new, uh, like, up and coming, like, uh, power structure within the Chinese government, she was saying. That was the first and only time I heard of it. And uh, she pointed out, I think, during the Shanghai. Uh, recent lockdowns again that happened in, with the COVID. Uh, they were all wearing those. I heard, I heard those are happening again already. Again. I heard like they, it was opening up, but like they're already Jeez. shutting down again. I want to get confirmation of that because that would be really bad for like Tesla and Jeez. every all like companies. Yeah. But she said uh, that was the doings of the white jackets or whatever. Uh, like when those guys were in the white hazmat suits. I don't know. If, the white was symbolic of the white jute jackets or whatever it was, but uh, yeah, I think it's just uh, there's just it's just the president it's just G. It's just uh, hmm. he has to do that because um, because uh, their vaccine uh, that they're using is only fifty five percent effective at pre Ooh. preventing um, no at only preventing severe death or illness to the original variant out of Wuhan. And that we've had uh, beta, like alpha, beta, gamma, and Omicron. We're like four versions past that. Jeez. And no one over there got has natural immunity either because up till now they had kept the virus out of the country. So here oh. we have a mixture of people who already had the virus and, and people who got the, vac <laughs> the vaccine. So it's much harder for it to uh, make people sick, kill people here and harder to spread over there they got no natural immunity and they got a vaccine at this point it's basically uh a, a, a water in a syringe it basically does nothing mm. interesting so so this and this latest version of omicron that has been hitting them it's not only more uh spreads easier but it's also more fatal than the earlier versions that we had hmm. so if they didn't do lockdowns they would be looking at like millions of deaths Ugh. like per week like because they of how like up. crowded they are and you know how this well, all the spreads so g is just like feels like he has to do lockdowns because pe hmm. so many people would be dying he's worried that they're gonna you know riot and like overthrow see, him remember after that first wave there was like a Wuhan water park that was like packed as hell. Like every inch was like a person in the pool. Like that was a viral image going around. Like when was this? Uh, I think it was after the first initial outbreak when they got early on. Yeah, 
Yeah, after the first wave. Uh, Is this before China realized that it was spreading? No, throughout it was their after country, they or? already beat it and did all those like strong arm tactics of like locking people in buildings and all that stuff. Oh, okay. And right after that, okay. they even though the virus was still around, they were all in this. There's a picture in Wuhan in this gigantic swimming pool with like thousands of them. Man, it was a giant place and. I can't even believe that's how it was, a lot of places are over there. I can't even believe it was allowed, and they're all like looking at the camera too, like it was a, a picture they wanted to take for some reason, like they beat the virus. Yeah, yeah, because they fucking like went around and put boards on everyone's doors for like yeah. uh, two months, so Messed they up. like the virus wasn't allowed to spread through like crazy strong arm yeah, tactics. People were jumping out of buildings instead of starving and crap. That is messed up. Yeah, people bitched over here, but you still could go to the grocery store and still yeah. go outside. And All that got shut down was you didn't have to go to work and you didn't have to go to school. And we it's got basically a holiday. Yeah, and you're getting stimulus <laughs> except money. For the, yeah, except for the miserable fucks who, like, uh, they hate their life, they hate their, their family, and they want to be at work to escape. Like everyone <laughs> else, <laughs> you know, yeah, it was I, pretty good I deal. enjoyed my time, and a lot of people pointed out the silver lining of the lockdowns where a lot of people to who were always on the go and never having a chance to think for a, even a few minutes a day, like they were forced to slow down and try to enjoy the... You know, the little things in life again. You orient a little bit. Yeah, it changes your perspective. Because when you're so caught up and stuff, you don't you don't have time to think. Yeah, the constant rat race always. And then, you know, it's so sad. You see all these people passing away after lifetimes of just pursuing money, trying to get this. Now it's a digital representation of your worth in a computer screen in the banking system. And people are just like finding no joy the whole time. And then they just die. With the yeah, big they're just... Like if for eventually there's gonna be a payoff. Eventually I'll enjoy myself, but if you die before you get there, you know it was all for nothing. Yeah, Alan Watts uh, had a great speech about that, and I think the South Park creators did an animation for the Alan Watts speech, and uh, it shows like from childhood in the uh, education systems, it shows like uh, you're wiggling the stick, like here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Come here, come chase this thing to the next thing, to the next thing. All right, then you're going to get to high school, then you go to college, and then when you're going to get out of college, you're going to be finally at your dream job. You're going to be at this desk, and you're going to be like, wait a minute, I don't feel any different now than what I've always felt. In the, you, it's like a scam. <laughs> it's like, uh, and then yeah, it's like a pyramid scheme. Yeah, yeah. Or the, even the the baby boomers are pretty bad at this. Uh, they like were pretty crazy about everyone working, and they flooded the job market, and like both like spouses worked, so they had like high divorce rates. But everyone after them is more interested in more of a work life balance, where it's a little yeah. more. Like Gen Xers, Millennials, uh, we're more like, you know, I, I don't want to uh, live to work, you know. Yeah. Like I uh, work to live. Cat wanna... Stevens made a great song uh, where he's talking about uh, some guy telling him, like, work hard, boy. Someday you'll have a job like mine. And then the chorus of the song is, but I might die tonight. And so it kind of gets you thinking. Like, so even before I got into this philosophy stuff, that song was in my life. I just came across it, and that got me thinking. And the more I started thinking, the more I realized how crazy everything is in this world. Like, money is not that important compared to what people think it is. It's important to yeah, a degree. It's, it's a lot of it is a Ponzi scheme. It's almost like a global Ponzi scheme. <laughs> and how you see, like, how everything's shaking out, it's almost like the U.S. is at the top of the Ponzi scheme. Yeah. And, like, now as globalization breaks down, it's like, Everyone else is kind of going to get fucked. <laughs> yeah, and their screwed. force is crazy. It's crazy how good it is for the United States compared to every place else. A lot of it is like lucky with our like geography. Yeah, water and, sources. Uh, yeah, just the, the, the things that you can't change. We're but, not going to uh, have a food shortage here compared to Spain. Yeah. Spain already knew they were going to have a shortage. And they were prevent Like as soon as this Russia thing started, they knew they were going to have a shortage and it was going to be severe. So they've been rationing for like many, many months. So yeah, not going to help. And everyone's going to pile into the U.S. dollar too, because like mm -hmm. all the other capital markets are just going to like implode. They're like no one's going to trust them. So it's going to help out. You know, our market, the U.S. dollar is going to be held up even more. One thing I'm worried about is inflation. Like yeah, some of these geopolitics guys are saying inflation is going to stay high, 
And that's bad for my stock portfolio. Yeah. <laughs> so I might want to think about diversifying a little bit into some like food and like energy stocks because um, a lot of people who have price targets like for Tesla say uh, to like, I know eventually it's going to turn out great, but if inflation, I mean, even if infl for Tesla is going to be so good that even if, inf but a lot of people think inflation is going to turn around and start falling soon. Hopefully. But with the way like global things are going, it also could just stay elevated for years. Like we used to think, like maybe the Fed is too short sighted mm -hmm. and they're just seeing like it's been that like two percent for like the last twenty years, no matter what we did, it was always like at two percent. So it's like it's gonna go back that way. It's such a strong this is just some short term weirdness. But then when you pull back and you look at it from a different perspective and you look at demographics, you could see that this last period of low inflation could be attributed to the former Soviet Union has been dumping its commodities on the global market cheaply and globalization has been adding all these cheap new workers mm. to produce all these cheap products. So that's why inflation has been low. But now all of that is going away. All the stuff from Russia is cut off mm. and all the cheap labor is going away. So there's no choice, like no matter what the the fed does inflation is going to be high because that's just the new reality there's bigger forces at work what about that they're recession? not even thinking think about they're going to have recession mm. yeah i do i i'm i'm one of the ones who think we're already in one uh yeah, it feels like so it. a lot of people are saying that uh it's not going to be till next year in the u.s it feels um, bad. Look at but, the freaking Bitcoin price right now. It was under twenty, but right now it's just a poke through. I'm thinking I think it's going to be up above twenty thousand real soon again. And some of these poke. But it broke. But but like twenty, like nineteen was like a major support level where people really didn't think it was going to break. See, there's a in Bitcoin. There's a huge uh, rule that is held true, where in each cycle it doesn't fall below the peak of the, the previous. Yeah, and it did That's that. Elliot was falling below. Yeah. So well, no, now that it, when it breaks a major support like that, suddenly it becomes more resistance. more people run for the doors. So well, the thing yeah, is, so it, it's it drops even further. At the time of recording, though, like see, what, there's a uh, temporary poke throughs that happen, but as long as it goes back up within a reasonable amount of time, it, that. That's just going to be a wick only, and unless the real body closes, it's not really a, a confirmed poke through. Some of these wicks I was looking at them, they last a week even, and so as long as it gets well, it back up. Well, it could be anything. It depends on what you're – if you, you could look at a monthly chart, exactly. and each wick is a month. You could well, look yeah, at a yearly I, chart, and each saying. wick is a year. I was saying the weekly, the weekly chart is what I meant. Uh, like, well, but, if you're talking about weekly specifically, well, also, then we got a little day, time still. Also one day, also three days, you know, all of them. So, yeah, like there's wicks. And the one day, it doesn't look great. Yeah, there's a lot of wicks. Like it's just – but you do see them on the weekly chart, and so there's yeah, we got some time. It, it just uh, the worst it got today when I was looking it was like seventeen thousand like eight hundred or whatever, and then yeah, and then People it, it went up already. Imagining that a month ago, they're like, no way. Yeah, but as long as it gets above that twenty thousand, it doesn't hold below for like a week. Then I think we'll be all right. I think we're at the floor as far as how low it's going to go because this is still in line with the rules of Elliott Wave, which I studied for years. As long as we get back up over that twenty thousand mark within the next week or so, so let's hope Elliott Wave is not some uh, some like some law that things have to follow. I know it's just technical it analysis. Exactly. Uh, but technical analysis doesn't work. Uh, Not like, always. But uh, there's exceptions. No. But of course, because it's just uh, it's. Uh, yeah. But if you go to any it, chart. It's, it, it, it's not what what determines things. It's just a, a way of looking at them. It's helpful, but uh, it tells you where reversal points are likely to be as well. And if you go to any chart, I could show yeah. you how Elliott Wave uh, has applied and the rules applied. And it's very hard to find exceptions where things I would fell love apart. to uh, next video if we pull up some charts and we could look at some charts in a shared screen and we could look at yeah, some pretty different assets and and make predictions about where they could go. 
and we could hold ourselves accountable too because mm -hmm. we can make a prediction and then look at see where where it ended up all right so that's my prediction right now Good i think idea. bitcoin's going to be up over this 20,000 mark by the definitely by the next uh well we're going to be doing these every two weeks but i think it's going to happen within the next week like that it's going to be over 20,000 on bitcoin again so we hang on i'm going to uh let me pull up a a bitcoin chart really quick Hopefully I'm, I'm not going to share it cuz yeah it, it might messes. screw things up yeah, but uh, I'm just gonna look at it just for my own. Yeah, I'm curious um, where are we at right now. I'm gonna go to notification right here. Coin market cap. Let's see in real time. Coin market cap. Bitcoin right now is at eighteen thousand two hundred and sixty-two. So, <laughs> all this daily chart does not look good since oh, it's uh it's nasty. since the ninth of June. It has been a neg all negative days since the 9th of June. The so that's world, nine days straight of drops. The world's in hell right now. <laughs> could be a historic buying opportunity. I think it's good. A lot of my friends yeah. think it's good. The time to buy. Like The thing is, I, I'm going to have too much of my money tied up of what I have uh, for this comedy project now. And I already put all my stuff in investments. So, yeah, I'm not getting any more. I would if I could. I would be getting some Bitcoin right now. This is good time. Um, could be. I don't know. I'm gonna not, not advice. Not, I'm, I'm gonna not guess. <laughs> yeah, just my guess is I'll say it drops down to fifteen thousand. I'll call that the bottom. Like it'll just tap it and then Let's see what happens. Up. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. A lot, there's a there's a psychology with these big round numbers that yeah. people tend to kind of react to. True. So that's a, I think that the S and P 500 has a a decent like another 10 or 20 percent to to go still. Hmm. Um, so if the S and P continues to drop, and I think Bitcoin will continue to drop with it. Um, Let's see, where are we at right now? For the, I was looking at this earlier. So to even get back to the peak of uh, before COVID, oh. uh, I'm looking at the S&P 500, the SPY. Oh, okay. Uh, so it was at like 365 or no, 325 uh, pre-COVID was the peak. And now we're at 365. So oh, it's not a lot. So another forty dollars on yeah, spy. Wait, did you say that backwards? You said three twenty-five, and then yeah, was the previous high, and it's three sixty-five right now. Three twenty-five. So let me see what is that? Is lower mm -hmm. than three sixty-five though. Yeah, because we've climbed since then. Oh, okay. I got you. That was the. That was the. Uh, the before the oh, COVID crash okay. happened, that was you. the high, and then it, it crashed down, and then it, we've been climbing up pretty you. steeply right. since then. Cool. Uh, cool. I'm gonna actually see what is the uh, the right. percentage on that from right now from 365. All right. Well, to... real quick, uh, I didn't get it in earlier because we were dealing with some technical stuff. I wanted to tell you guys about uh, the titan nft i like to chill with these guys they're a cool group we got i like to be the dj but we've been mixing it up and uh yeah join it's a it's a great time to get uh, uh nft right now because with the crypto being so low you're gonna pay a fr fraction of what i paid to get uh the same thing pretty, pretty much so yeah it's a lot of fun you know, like a lot of memes a lot of jokes we got uh riddles now it's just a fun crew to hang out with it's got a cool little culture building so yeah also make sure you're looking at the screen as i've been saying this stuff too I'll, i'm sure i'll be uh putting in some of the cool uh titan images like sci-fi type stuff so yeah there'll be a link to join us if you'd like so yeah hop in uh, my name in there is zisu 007 my old gamer name <laughs> so all right yeah, hopefully we'll see you guys in there. You got anything else uh, about the stats, Marco? Uh, yeah, that's only a 10% drop left in the S&P 500 to get to that level. So um, I think that's a good psychological point. So if the S&P 500 drops another 10%, um, that could be a good bottom. Yeah, it makes sense. 
But yeah, it's about 1.30 a.m. my time or so, just short of it, so. Cool, let's call it. Yeah, might as well wrap it up. We had a good, like, I, normally I like to prepare more, and we do it on a Sunday night, but this time we just spontaneously did it on a Saturday. Well, I didn't get to talk about Neon. I wanted to All talk right. about Neon. Oh, just really yeah. quick, is yeah, it, that's it. another thing. That's uh, So we have a food ener uh, energy crisis, a food shortage, and now I learned about neon. There's going to be a neon shortage, which is one of the noble gases, and we use it to and lasers to make uh, microchips, uh, semiconductor chips. So I learned about this. I was so pissed off. Uh, like 70% of the neon comes from Ukraine and Russia. So we're not getting that anymore either now. So just when I thought that semiconductors are going to, the supply was going to come back, they're going to get cheap again. We're going to have them for cars. We're going to have them for graphics cards, for our computers. Mother nope, Russia. apparently we're not going to have enough neon either. So Mother Russia's that fault. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing how, like, because just they export so many minerals and food and energy that uh, them out of the equation is just how much how much it's fucking up uh, the whole global yeah. economy. It's yeah, insane. it's messed up. Like, it, I mean, it seems like it messes things up more now than ever in human history. It's like everybody's so interdependent. We're on more each other. connected. Yeah, yeah, the world is so small now with these fast transportation. It's just going to get even smaller and smaller when these super trains are uh, going to be completed. They've been saying they're going to be possible where you can go from New York to Paris uh for lunch in a matter of hours and then go back home at the end of the day take the train or back once home. uh elon musk's uh starship once that is uh, fully reusable rockets that could blast you up uh slightly into space so you could go uh, across the world in an hour Jeez. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's gonna be fun hopefully but, uh, we can make it to that yeah hopefully these nukes oh i did hear something interesting real quick play. about these nukes uh I listened to this one researcher named Joseph Farrell. He's got a PhD, but he's like an alternative uh, researcher type guy. And he says that Russia yeah, has... Alternative PhD. No, no. He's got a legit PhD. <laughs> but he's uh, all, he does alternative research and like like World War II type stuff and all, all sorts of stuff. He says that the Russians have first strike capabilities with their nukes and the U.S. and the West doesn't have that, I guess, because of these hypersonic type what? of uh, nukes yeah that, that was weird uh, we have a ton of submarines yeah, that are ready to shoot but maybe they understand that the subs will, those missiles take some time maybe and uh maybe that he what he meant was that the russian ones move so fast that we're not even going to realize that we're about to get hit until we're hit maybe that's what he meant but that was that was interesting but hopefully we'll never have to figure that out <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah i think if that happens like first strike or not uh, uh everyone is going to be annihilated yeah but all right <laughs> leave it off mm -hmm. on, on that good, happy uh, note uh have yeah. that musings podcast and also remember you shall die i got my memento mori pending going right here you probably can't see yeah it remember well. everyone and, you're gonna uh, be dead soon but you know, just so have seize fun. the day. Just seize the day. Man. <laughs> have a fun. That's why I'm doing this comedy project. It's going to be awesome, and I've talked about it enough, I think. But it ball's moving. I, I'm starting to recruit people. I got over like 60 applications already from people that uh, would like to be in. So I'm, I'm about to start responding tomorrow, and hopefully you'll hear from me. And uh, all right, well, so Memento Mori seize the day, and uh, subscribe to our channels. Check out his as well, Musings by Marco channel. Uh, subscribe to us hit up the titan in the links and yeah join join us every single day we have a lot of fun in there so all right take it easy guys have a good night or day whatever right. it is at your time now <laughs> see ya.